I was not even thinking about to do the six mayor, never. Like, okay, maybe one day I will go. But then I got the lottery from Tokyo and start to think about, and then was COVID. So I deferred mm-hmm. for 2022. Uh, and during the COVID period, you'd have like a lot of things to think about. Say, you know, why I will not try? I have the lottery for Tokyo is the difficult, most difficult for me. I have very good qualifying time. So, but, so let's try to do the six in one year in 2022. And now like a couple of years ago, I start to increase my training level. So I've been doing now like 250, 240 something. And finally this year in Berlin again, 245. I mean, 247, 245 is the same thing, but it took me like a three years. I mean, first, I think that is experience. Experience uh, is very important. And mm-hmm. you don't need too much time. You know, people just say, oh, I don't have time. No, you just need a pair of sources with the only thing that you need to do your training. Yeah. And the most important is the experience, you know. Uh, before I was reading a lot, uh, wasting a lot of time going to the gym or to the tracks and meeting with people, do like a speed up exercise, you know, and now, now I just run, run by myself because I don't have time to meet with other people or some this in my pace. So just run, 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 run. <laughs> Hey listeners, if you are enjoying the stories, please leave a comment, share, or subscribe to this channel for two reasons. First, you'll get notified when I publish the next story. Second, it inspires me to get you more stories. I'm your host, Kamal Dada. Enjoy the story. Thomas, I'm glad to have you here on the podcast. Hi, good morning, Kamal. How are you? Good to see you. Good to talk with you. I'm doing great and I'm really excited to uh, learn about your journey. You have an amazing story to tell. So I'm, I'm here to uh, learn more about it. So let's start with a quick introduction. Do you want to tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Tomas and um, Tomas Blanco. Uh, I am original from from Spain, uh, and then I moved to Boston area almost 15 years ago. So in 2008, yeah, 15 years ago, where actually I live and I am settled down here with my family. <clears throat> oh, great! And what do you do for work? Well, I work in as a research scientist, and I work in a big uh, academic institution in the Boston area, uh, and do research and academic uh, stuff like uh, teaching and mentoring other students. Oh, nice! That that's pretty yeah. exciting. And you are a runner, and you did Berlin Marathon along with many other marathons. So, let's do you want to share a little bit about your Berlin Marathon experience this year? Yeah, I will say very quickly, it was very, very, very fast because, you know, I was involved in the unit run in the six world mayor marathon. So I have my family here in Boston, my work. So, you know, so many days off. So briefly, I flew to Berlin like the day before the marathon. I ran the marathon and the evening immediately from the uh, Landerwood Tour, I took a taxi to the new airport and fly back to Boston. So my experience in Berlin was basically around 24 hours. But I have to say that my experience in Berlin started already in 2012 when I first qualified for Boston. I ran my first Berlin marathon and it was incredible, like almost uh, 13 years ago. So... I was there, I traveled with my family and it was a great experience because also I did my PR at this, at this time that was I ran in 247 minutes. I found Berlin like incredible marathon with very, very amazing people, volunteers, everything was like a very great experience. For me to go to, to Berlin is always like go back home to Europe. So it's like, I feel like I am at home. And then I ran also last year. And in 2022, I was similar experience like in 2023. I flew to Berlin, arrived at like a, a hotel, go to the marathon and come back super fast to, to, to Boston because, you know, you need to work. You need to go next weekend to run another marathon, next weekend another one. So you don't want to expend too more time uh, in one city. But anyway, uh, the experience of running Berlin, I always say to everyone that there are two, well, 
all the mayors are very important, but Berlin is really this European atmosphere that is very difficult to find uh, somewhere else. So I really mm -hmm. love Berlin. Oh, and you know, I see that you have the Brandenburg Tor behind you and this feeling when you pass running, seeing the finish line yes, yes. and you pass under the Brandenburg Tor, this is like, it's like energetic feeling like a strong, like, I don't know, I say, I cannot describe such a feeling when you pass exactly that, that, that point. Very great. Yeah, that, that is so true. I'm just curious. So you land the evening before the race and you, you leave Berlin after the, the following evening no, after the race. So no, I, I, I arrived the day before just to be on time to pick up my bin number babe. at the ah, okay. school. Yeah, okay. and, have some, and have some rest. Otherwise, you know, you can't. And then uh, I took my staff and I took a, ta a taxi after immediately. I have like, a, I remember to have a, one alcoholic beer that they have at the end. In yeah. The finish line and go get out, call a, a taxi and go straight to the airport because my flight <laughs> was at five. So uh, literally <laughs> it was like, I didn't have too much time to enjoy the city this time. But yeah. you know, I like it, Berlin. I love it. Great. I'm just curious, like, do you prep yourself? Because especially if you're doing an international race, your body needs to adjust to the clock a little bit. I know you've run quite a few marathons, so we'll talk a little bit more on that. But I'm just saying, do you do anything yeah. specific before to so prep your body up to the time? So no. No, I, I'm not doing anything specific. My daily routine is very busy. I'm traveling a lot because of my work. So because okay. I have different meetings for working, you know. So for me, travel is something uh, that I get used to it. So ah, okay. Okay. I, I adjust very well. My body tries to sleep, to rest as much as I can. And, you know, the most important is your training, right? That is true. That is true. Now, let's... Talk about a little bit. So you did six majors in one year, which is very, very few people are able to do it, even if you want to. First of all, it's a lot of training, a lot of running, a lot of planning, uh, a lot of expenses too. Um, how do you pull it off uh, doing six majors in one year? And why you pursued six majors in one year? Well, this has started in... 2019 when i got the lottery for for tokyo you know i got okay. the lottery for tokyo and i i was not even thinking about to do the six mayor never like okay maybe one day i will go but then i got the lottery from tokyo and start to think about and then was COVID, so i deferred mm -hmm. for 2022 and, and during the COVID period you'd have like a lot of things to think about say you know why i will not try i have the lottery for tokyo is the difficult most difficult for me i have very good qualifying time so but so let's try to do the six in one year in 2022. And let me tell you that the most difficult is not to run all of them, is to get in in all of them, to get like right. a big number. So fortunately, I had like a very good qualifying times for Boston, Chicago, New York, and Berlin. So for this was okay. And then London is the also the, 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 the very, very difficult. But, you know, I have to go to a tour operator to, to get into London. Mm -hmm. So I try in 2022, and unfortunately, uh, the 2022 for international runners in Tokyo, we couldn't travel in the last minute. They were not lift the <clears throat> the COVID restrictions, so we couldn't uh, go for that. So I knew that I missed to do it in the uh, 2022, but still I keep running the the five and say, you know, I will run Tokyo next year and I will complete in one year. You know, my, my plan was, no, it has to be in the same calendar year, right? So I immediately reorganize everything, search apply, get the tour operator for London and organize everything. So this is more difficult, you know, to get everything aligned. Yeah. To go. So uh, the London was like just six days after Boston this year in 2023. In 2022, I ran in... One Sunday was Berlin, next Sunday was London, next Sunday was Chicago, 246, 247, 248. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> everything, and then three weeks after was New York City. Right. So um, you need to really prepare everything, the tickets, 
hotels, arrange everything for the school with your family, your wife at work, uh, multiple things. You know, we live here in the United States, but we don't have any other family around to help us with kids. So uh, it's a little bit logistic, more than just go and run. Once that you are in the city, just relax, go do your race as best as you can. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> and you have incredible times too for all these races. Right. Yeah, actually, in Berlin, I did my my PR in two forty five. I am forty nine years old. So for somebody who is forty nine, being able to run in less than three hours to so two fifty or even two forty five in Berlin was was absolutely great. It was very good. Um, <clears throat> I started running like 15 years ago. It's not like I've been running many, many years. Actually, I started running when I moved to the United States. I started to be more involved. And yeah. now I was like a 35, 34, 35. And now that I'm almost 50, I'm getting my best. Like Pretty amazing. Um, and what? why did you chase six of them in one year, though? Like, I know it's a lot of logistics that you just mentioned that you have to figure out. But what is driving you to do six in one year? I don't know. I think that marathon runners or in general runners nowadays, we are crazy people, right? We do this kind of yeah. things that have no sense. You know, fortunately, <laughs> I have my wife that supports me a lot with this because otherwise, you know, you don't have your family support yeah, in terms yeah. of letting you to go out for your training, traveling, you know. I try to take my family in as much marathons as I can. It will be very difficult, but if you ask me one reason why, I, I don't know. It's these things that come one day and you just move forward. You know, you don't really think too much about that. Otherwise, you will never do it. That is so true. Yeah, I, I exactly may know what you mean. Like, okay, let's some crazy idea comes in, just go, let's do it. Like, not overthink it. Yeah. yeah. But let, let me let me tell you, you think about, you know, in the past, when, you know, 20 years ago, if I thought about the marathon, for me, it was something like you put the rocket in the moon, you know, for me, it was like <laughs> something like yeah. not really something for me. And then one day I said, you know, I want to run a marathon. So why not? I, yeah. I did it. And I didn't stop after that. So these are those kind of things that doesn't need to maturate too much in your brain. It's something that is coming one day, you do it to like it and let's do it. Let's keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go back. So you mentioned you started to run 15 years ago around the time you moved to Cambridge in Massachusetts. Um, so how did you get into running? Because that's probably you're in early 30s, if I, if I get the numbers correct. <laughs> Uh, well, my life in Spain, I have similar work, so I come to, to here because of my of my job. But, you know, my life was similar, I, a little bit different. I was like a musician. I was like a singer in the in the, in the rock band. So I was totally different. Oh, wow. Okay. So in par yeah. In parallel to my work, uh, I, I was, I, I always do something else, right? So what instrument do you play? Or you are... I was playing the, ele the electric guitar and singing. I was a frontman, like a frontman, I'm like a singer. Oh, that's so, exciting. I did that for 15 years. So when I moved to, to to Cambridge, to Boston, I tried to make a band here. But, you know, I, I was tired. I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to try something different. And then one day you meet somebody because Boston is the perfect place for runners. You know, for me, it was amazing when I came to Boston and I saw in the Charles River, in the Esplanade, all this area of Beautiful Boston, area. like thousands yeah. of runners. I say, wow, wow, what is this? You know, I never saw that before. Yeah. And... Somehow I start to run. I start to run more, 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 more. And one day I signed for a marathon in Rhode Island. Uh, uh, and I did three hours, 30 minutes. It was my first marathon. And, you know, but the last 10 miles was like, I'll never do that anymore. <laughs> I don't want I don't want this anymore. And just finish, yeah. you know, just finish and say, okay. And two months after I would travel to Florida for a second marathon. And it's how, how it, you know. Now I'm here. Yep. So what was the gap between when you started to run and versus your first marathon? Was it very short time? Uh, 45 minutes. From three hours, 30 minutes to two hours, 45. Yeah, 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Now I was uh, talking about uh, like ah, okay. you started to run and then you did your oh, first okay. marathon. It's like a couple of months, a year. No, 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 no. I would say uh, I, I ran my first marathon in 2019, to 2000, sorry, 2009. 
And um, then I did my fastest marathon in Berlin that was 247. So it was right. 330 to 247, two years and a half after. And then I've been keeping like a 250, 255, three in this average. And now, like a couple of years ago, I started to increase my training level. So I've been doing now like 250, 240 something. And finally, this year in Berlin again, 245. I mean, 247, 245 is the same thing, but it took me like a three years, three years to really, mm-hmm. uh, uh, three years and lose a lot of weight. And, you know, it's not something that definitely you should try like in a few months. Right. You are not a, an experienced runner before, right? That is true. That is so true. Now, you definitely get a lot out of running. So if you're running for the last 15 years and your times got really better as you are, you know, seasoned runner by now. So I'm just curious, what do you get out of running and why you keep yourself pushing to do better and better? And you did something like amazing this year, like running six of them too. Like what, what drives you? Essentially, I always when people ask me why you run, say I I, I am addicted. You know, I, I don't have any other explanation. Mm-hmm. I, I I am addicted to run. You know, I, I need to go every day at least for thirty minutes every day. I need to run every day, and I, I, I sometimes I do like one hour, two hours, or longer distance. But I need to run. If I don't run every day, I feel like something is not good with me. You know, if I finish my work at the, one day and it's bad, I have like a bad day. I go for my running and everything gets fine. You know, everything is more like a balance. I need it. Uh, I always need to do something else in addition to my work, but I found it running like a perfect excuse. And then what's the best excuse to uh, uh, take advantage, go for running marathons, traveling and do this kind of yeah. stuff. So it's like a kind of bicycle, right? Like uh, you go for a marathon, you need to train, you train, you go for a marathon. But my main purpose is not uh, to run a marathon. My main purpose is keep running, uh, happy, no injuries, uh, and enjoying every day. That's the most important for me. Great. What would you say you attribute as you are improving over the years, right? Now you ran your PR or PV at Berlin after 15 years of running. Like, what do you attribute it to? Is it your training, your daily runs? What is it? I mean, first, I think that is experience. Experience uh, is very important. And mm-hmm. you don't need too much time. You know, people just say, oh, I don't have time. No, you just need a pair of shoes. It's the only thing that you need to do your training. Yeah. And the most important is the experience. You know, uh, before I was reading a lot, uh, wasting a lot of time going to the gym or to the tracks so or meeting with people, do like a speed up exercise. You know, and now, now I just run run by myself because I don't have time to meet with other people or some this in my pace. So just run, 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 run. And you need to build a platform for many years. <clears throat> for example, now I am running between 100 to 160 week miles per week. So to be able to do six this time, you need to build like a big platform. And once that you are here is when you can increase, for example, 60 miles more per week, right? Or Mm -hmm. uh, one minute a mile faster and be sure that you are not going to get into any injury because this is the most important. You know, there is nothing more frustrating that in the middle of the season you get an injury and you have to stop running or you can't have to cancel a marathon and all these things. So this is a learning process over all these years. And now when I look back, is to build a foundation. You know, you need to build a foundation. If you are not like a experienced runner or college runner or, you know, a random person like me. And this takes years. This takes years of experience and frustrations and injuries yeah. and learning. And finally say, okay, I'm here. This is my limitation. You need to know your limitations. You cannot put like, okay, I will run in two hours, 10 minutes. You know, that's mm-hmm. not no sense. So you need to know really know yourself and your capacities and capabilities to be able to do like the best as you can, optimizing your time and keeping out of injury. Perhaps I could run much more faster, but I will need to focus for one marathon per season, do like more specific training, but Mm. I'm not sure that this is what I want to do. You know, I want to keep like a big performance, but not like a, you know, like in pocket that you play all, all into one, no. I, I prefer to do these kind of things than keeping 240, 250. 
I hope one day I will go before 240. I will try next year because I will reduce the number of marathons. I hope I will try in, in Chicago to go before, below 240. Mm -hmm. But if not, it's okay. <clears throat> no, that's great. Now, it is so true that what you just mentioned, right? The experience over the years helps you to know yourself better, like what you can or cannot, or you should or should not. That helps you to optimize for sure for performance. That's great. And another area, I'm just curious. So you have a very busy job, a demanding job, which you have to travel. You have a family, kids, and now you also balance running, even also bringing the family. I mean, a lot of folks actually, and I talked to, uh, struggles quite a bit planning all those things and juggling all the balls. How do you do that? Well, you know, many people ask me this question. You know, it's a very interesting question. And I, I know how to answer very well in Spanish, but I used to say something like, when you want to do something, uh, you find a way. Right. You know? When you don't, you find excuses. Right. You find excuses of your family, you find excuses of your work, you find excuses of your car, that you see this uh, kid is sick, that you have pain here, whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. I say the same. I just need to go home, put my sneakers out. In one hour, I'm coming home, taking this hour. You know, no one even noticed in my home that I go out for a train, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes you get up early at 5 a.m. or later at the evening. Or sometimes, you know, I am at work and I have some flexibility. And I like literally two minutes walking from the Charles River. That is one of the greatest places in the world for <laughs> running, if you know the area. Yeah. And I just put my sneakers and running shorts and, and go. Come back, take a shower, and, you know, I'm fresh. So or I travel into the city. The first thing I arrive, I go to the hotel, put my sneakers, go to the run around the city, know the city in, in one or two hours running, depending on my diet. Done, you know. I don't need to go for a track. I don't need to search for a treatment. I don't need to do multiple things or meet with other runners. That is how you basically waste your time or you right. don't optimize your time. So yeah. uh, uh, for me, this is not a problem. I think that I found very well balanced. You need to take priorities always. And if one day I cannot run my 10 miles, it's okay. Tomorrow I will increase to 15 in several days and I will compensate. Mm -hmm. oh, no, that's, that's great to know. I know you mentioned a couple of times about running, especially in Cambridge, running around the Charles River. Can you share a little bit more about folks who are not familiar with the running culture in Cambridge, especially in the Charles River area? It would be, it would be good to share. Yeah. I, I... I don't know how to describe, but the Charles River area is like a eight minute, eight miles loop approximately. I mean, you you can extend to almost fifty miles following the both sides of the Charles River going to uh, Walton or Lexington. You know, it's like depending there are many trails, but the Charles River, especially between Cambridge and Boston, is like a um, escape from the city. So all the runners, people, tourists are coming eventually to the Charles River to right. take pictures or to run or whatever. And it's an amazing boulevard. Or it's not like a boulevard. It's like a like a like a road, like a park, like a beer park. And everybody's running around. So there are like a few bridges, and people are running around. We're just going three miles up and down, three miles up and down. And especially during the uh, during the spring season and the summer, it's really really beautiful. During, during right. the fall, it's also amazing. And then during the winter, is the most impressive time here because. You go at 5 a.m. in the morning with uh, this high of snow in everywhere, and you see runners, like a local runners from uh, like all Bostonian runners in t shirts and in shorts. And yeah. it is like, a, I don't know, a 20 below zero uh, Celsius or around minus 12 Fahrenheit. So, you know, it's, it's like crazy. It's like thousands of thousands and thousands of runners every day. And if you are in the spring and the summer, the amount of runners, 10,000 runners, I don't know, it's, it's impressive. And it's not like when you go to many other countries, other cities, that the majority is like male runners. No, in Boston, you see like equally, like uh, male, female, like people 80 years, 90 years old, young people, teenagers running. It's really amazing. Yeah, just walking around the area actually will inspire someone to even just go put in the shoes and go for a run. I think it's so yeah. amazing, the running culture here too. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean in 20 degrees and a feet of snow and people are running, especially the days, in, especially in winter when you get little high temperature, you, 
it's like a summer for some folks like yeah that's good shorts and t-shirt go yeah not for me but, <laughs> that's but true. yeah yeah i've seen like oh it's a 30 degrees you got on the 40s in the middle of winter look let's go it's a summer like weather to go for a run there now let's talk a little bit about your support system i'm sure over the years to do or chase all these goals and having the flexibility or drive to just go out you put a support system around you i'm just curious how does it look for you what do you mean exactly like a like a system um uh, like who supports you to go run like your family i'm sure there is there you mentioned a little bit about it maybe yes. the running community no just my family and, and myself i don't have sponsors uh, you know when you uh, i am a person who in addition to running i am very active in writing columns in different uh, my opinion i have my opinion columns in newspapers or i do my opinion in different uh, social networks or whatever so when you have sponsors you have to be very careful you need to solve yourself you cannot sometimes express what you want and i don't want that you know i I want to be a free person, not tight. Yeah. If somebody pay for a pair of shoes, you need to say something or don't say something else. So no, I don't have any company. I have a lot of people offering me like sponsorship. Or you want to do this, we will pay. But, you know, I prefer to do this uh, by myself because it's my challenge, you know. It's very easy when you have a company or so you have, I don't know, institutions, whatever, giving you money or send you a pair of sneakers, but can you, booking you an air flight ticket. But then has the inconvenience that you lose your freedom. So I don't want to lose my freedom. This is much more important. So um, no, I don't have anything. It's what, what I am, you know, nothing else. <laughs> you need to save money from other parts. But, you know, you're a runner. So when you run, you don't have too much time to, I don't have TV, I don't have HBO, I don't have Netflix, I don't have so many other things that I don't go out too much for restaurants or just normal with your family, what you need. But for myself, you know, I try to live like a very simple and basic life that allows me to do what I want and at the same time reserve this extra money for traveling, going for the marathons or oh, training nice. or get better shoes or better stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great to know. No, it was great chatting with you, Thomas. I really enjoyed our chat. Uh, wish you all the best um, and go from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the, the, the opportunity to, to chat, to talk with you. And everyone can find me in the Facebook, uh, Strava, LinkedIn, uh, whatever. So somebody needs any advice about how to build yourself. I'm not a trainer. I don't mentor. I don't want to coach people. But sometimes people ask me how to do. It's no rush. And you need time to do that. And be expectable about some of the coaches around that they are trying to train people who are like on my age, like they will be 18 years old elite runners. You need to find your position. You need to find your spot yourself in the running community and in the running wherever you are and this is your maximum capacity anyway i talk too much thank you very much no, that's, very good to chat with you <laughs> that's great